So you've got a great deal that just kind of fell in your lap, a property that hit your radar and you know time is of the essence. You need to get out there and size it up quickly. Make sure that what looks like a deal from afar and smells like a deal actually maths like a deal. That means you or somebody you trust has to go out and lay eyes on that property and make sure that the numbers work. But when the pressure's on and time is of the essence like that, how do you make sure that you don't accidentally overlook or forget to inspect something? Would it be great if you had a cheat sheet, maybe a seasoned investor's cheat sheet that you could just have in your bag of tricks, pull out and make sure that all the boxes are checked? What if you could get access to that free of charge, no strings attached, and even get a quick walkthrough so you really understand how to read it and use it? Let's talk about that. Hey, what's up guys? JP Moses here. Hope you're doing well. And uh, this video, I just want to kind of quickly run through a neat little form I put together many moons ago and we still use. We use it a little differently than we used to though. It's the property inspection summary that you see here before you. Now, it's a pretty darn simple document, so there's really not a lot that I need to explain to you, but I think it may be helpful to walk through a couple of elements on it and uh, explain how we use it today. So originally I put this together, I had like a gazillion of them printed and stuffed in this normal size manila envelope that I kept on hand in the car. And the idea is I would use this form to quickly assess a property, you know, just get all the necessary info that I need to size it up uh, all on a one side of a single sheet of paper. And, uh, and then I would maybe use the back for anything extra that there wasn't the space for on the front, something like that. And then armed with this information, I, I would hope, or armed with this document rather, I would get in, get her done and get out as quickly as possible um, especially if, you know, if it's one of those days where I printed off like 15 different houses that I want to see. Uh, so I would aim to have this thing filled out and, uh, maybe snap some digital pictures on my camera all in about 15 to 20 minutes. And sometimes I actually accomplished that. Uh, <laughs> and then I would also keep a copy of this filled out in a tickler file, even if my offer was turned down that way, I could go back and quickly size up the house and what my last offer was and that kind of thing. And then see if I might want to follow up with another offer. Personally, I found this little piece of paper particularly helpful when I'm making a lot of offers on houses, it really just helps keep everything organized and in one place. So originally I filled it all out. Nowadays, uh, my business is set up just a little bit differently. I have uh, my acquisitions manager, James, who actually goes out to the houses and uh, he is not very good at filling stuff out. And we use Podio now and Podio didn't exist, you know, back in 2001 when I created this document. So um, some of what you're about to run through, we do on Podio now instead of this document. But some people are, you know, some people are just not digital folks. Some people don't really like computers. They like doing things on paper, whatever. Um, even if you are using something like Podio for some of this information or some other uh, software, th at the very least, and this is how more how James uses this today in our operation, this is a good checklist so that you don't forget to review things when you're at the house. I don't know about you, but when I'm out at the house, I am really trying to focus hard on the seller and building rapport and uncovering motivation. And I'm focused on like every ninja Jedi mind trick and, and connection technique that I've ever learned. And when you're doing that, sometimes it, it can be hard to remember everything about the property that you need to look at. So there's been many times when I, I didn't have this to use as kind of a mental checklist or a written checklist, I guess it's not mental. And then I ended up going, you know, I don't, I don't really remember if, if there were foundation issues because I totally forgot to even look at the foundation. Obviously that can be an expensive mistake to make. So even if you don't fill out paperwork like this, I would recommend that you have this handy to use as a checklist. So let me just walk through it. Um, whether you use these kind of sheets or not, when you visit a property, obviously you got the street address. If it's an MLS listed property, I find it very handy to have the MLS number on this document, the area that it's in. So like in my area, I might say uh, Collierville, or I might just put the zip code right there or, you know, West side of main street, if that matters, whatever it matters to me about the area, I'll make a quick note of that. 
whether it's a single family or a two family or something else. I want to put the date so I can remember when I was there. Uh, number of bedroom, or excuse me, first the square feet, the bedrooms, the bathrooms, any other rooms, uh, and whether it's vacant or occupied. So, you know, quick little rundown. Now, you can also, by the way, have your bird dogs fill this out. This is a great little form. If you have bird dogs bringing you leads, you know, you could even create a digital version of this if you prefer to have them fill it out online. But um, you can use this as a template for the information that your bird dogs need to give you before you'll even look at a deal from them. Okay, so let's just run through this real quick. Roof repair replace. And you, the idea on this form would be that you check here if it needs work and that you would check here if it's okay and in good condition. And then any comments, obviously you're not writing a novel, just any quick notes that you want to make about the roof, you would make it here. And then um, if you're comfortable estimating the repair cost just based on what you know roofs for this type of house and this size are going to cost, then you can go ahead and splat it right there. Then you just run down the list. You've got, uh, you, you lay your eyes on the exterior and see if what the condition of the paint and or siding is. Uh, do the windows need to be replaced? Does the foundation need any repair? Uh, garage or other parking, what's the condition of it? Does it even exist? Uh, does it need landscaping? And obviously that's going to vary depending upon what's going on in your area, depending upon whether it's a rental or going to be a retail exit strategy. Uh, does the exterior have some debris that needs to be cleaned up? Interior debris, interior paint, carpentry, any woodwork that needs to be done on the inside. What's the condition of the heating and cooling system? I can't tell you. Before we had James using this as a checklist, how many times he would say, I don't know, really, I don't remember if it had central air or not. Because <laughs> he just forgot because he was building rapport with the seller. Uh, lay eyes on the electrical system. Is it uh, updated or not? Are we dealing with fuses? Are we dealing with breakers? Are we dealing with some kind of like crazy hybrid? Uh, what's the plumbing situation? Carpet, vinyl needed anywhere. Kitchen, does it need any repairs? Scroll down. Uh, bathrooms, septic tank, oil well, or oil tank well, anything else? So there's your checklist, right? And then you've got, uh, you know, you can add up all your repair items and then give yourself an estimate. Any other comments, there's a spot for that. And then, hang on a second, I'm going to have to move this document on my screen. Let me pause the video. All right, I'm back. Sorry, I had to reposition a little bit. So down here, I created these little areas so that I could do some quick calculations. And the retail calculation, this is just your classic Ron LeGrand Mayo formula, right? ARV, what do I think the ARV is? Make a note of it here. Obviously, I'm going to have to look at some hard comps to determine that. Times 70%, what is times 70%? Less estimated repairs, less... Anything else I decide I might want, like my wholesaling fee, for example, could go here. And then my maximum allowable offer I input here. If you are looking at this as a rental property, not a retail analysis, then uh, this is a type of formula that I have used to calculate a rental Mayo. It may or may not apply to your area. Each area tends to be rather specific as to what the landlord's formulas need to be. So you're going to want to probably tweak this a little bit to match what landlords think is a good deal in your area. That, by the way, is why I'm giving this to you as a Word document so that you can edit the crap out of this if you want to. Uh, but you have a good framework to start with. And then ultimately, you're going to uh, make a note over here of the asking price. Like if it's a listed property, they have an asking price and the listing agent, uh, who the seller is. And then down here at the very bottom, um, just an opportunity for you to make note of any offers that you've made. Whenever you make your first offer, the date, uh, if they counter, the date that they countered and how much, second offer, all that kind of stuff. It's pretty self-explanatory. I found this section especially helpful when I was dealing with a lot of MLS offers. And there was a season in our business where we did almost exclusively deals from the MLS. So take this document and revamp it, make it your own. Um, if nothing else, you could just use the left side here as a checklist. Like I said, when you go to the property or you can print it off and use it the exact same way that I used to use it. Like I said, we don't fill this out every on every deal anymore it was a great aid to me earlier in my career though and uh, at this point the biggest value it has for us is James uses it as a checklist so it's yours to do with as you will guys if you haven't done so lately 
make sure you check out all the other goodies that we have available for you in the swipe and deploy section of the site and look at all of the awesomeness. I'm talking scripts, checklists, contracts, affidavits, all kinds of stuff pulled right out of mine and Patrick's real life real estate investing businesses. And call to action here. After you download this form and add it to your arsenal, if you have anything that we haven't already given you that you would like us to consider for a future swipe and deploy, please leave it in a comment below. We'd love to know. I'm always uh, wanting to deliver for you guys what's going to help you the most based on where you are in your business right now. So if you don't have something like that, some kind of form or checklist or whatever that you would like, raise your hand. Tell us what it is by, by leaving a comment below. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. JP out. Thank you.